Well, I'm Ken Chick, and this is my in-scale model railroad, the Danforth, Hadley, and Northern. And there's an interesting story where the name came from. Uh, Danforth is a type of anchor, and uh, so that was the anchor of the railroad. It had to do with some boating experiences that I had way back, losing a number of Danforth anchors. So. <laughs> And I don't remember where Hadley came from. I think there is an actual river called Hadley somewhere, but uh, and the northern part was, I like the idea of the Northern Pacific. In fact, the Northern Pacific is incorporated into this railroad in, in a number of ways. The, uh, the towns are all the names of the towns that were on the uh, mountain district of the Northern Pacific Railroad, although none of them are actually modeled in any fashion. We only use the name. Uh, and there is a great deal of uh, uh, Northern Pacific equipment on the railroad now. Uh, it was about, uh, uh, I think it was uh, 1903 when the guy who uh, developed or first built the uh, Danforth Hadley Northern went bankrupt and, and eventually was purchased by the Northern Pacific. Or at least that's my story. So this is a uh, point-to-point -point railroad. It's designed for operation. There are approximately 15 towns or switching areas on the railroad. Uh, it's probably in terms of track about 98 and a half percent complete. There are a couple of switching areas that have to be uh, or a couple of switches have to be added. The scenery uh, is probably about uh, uh, 95 percent complete. Uh, there are a couple areas that are left to be done where I still have to put in some track. There's a major city that uh, is kind of uh, set up, but the actual roads aren't in yet, just the uh, some cardboard replicas. Um, railroad runs on uh, North Coast Engineering, uh, DCC. Um, I got into that initially <coughs> when it was first introduced. <coughs> Excuse me, uh, about 30 years ago or, or more, and I, I stuck with it and I went with it and, as opposed to any of the other systems because at that point in time I had a number of engines, and one of the features was that they supported four digit numbering, so I didn't have to have a cross reference for any of the, uh, the engines. I've been very happy with the system, it operates well. It's, uh, it's all wireless, although we still have module or, uh, uh, areas on the uh, face here where we can plug in if we need to. Um, what else can I tell you? Oh, uh, when I started the railroad, it was about the time that um, Railcraft came out with Code 55 uh, in scale track. And I, at that time, sold all of my Pico switches and track and bought whole bunch of uh, railcraft uh, track. There were no switches at the time. They had some things called switch kits where basically uh, all the rail for a switch, the points, the frog, uh, and two bus bars across the top of the rails that held things uh, in, in uh, gauge kind of. Uh, so I developed some uh, uh, little uh, plastic uh, Oh, I'm not sure what you call them. Various to put ties in, and then I ended up building, really rebuilding all of those uh, turnouts. When I ran out of those, uh, I had purchased I think uh, about a hundred of those initially in four different uh, scales, and then people doing it and stopped doing it. I started using uh, uh, the uh, what is it uh, fast tracks, uh, and I made a number of fast tracks uh, turnouts and then some I just laid on templates uh, to fit the area. There are about 250 turnouts on this railroad. Uh, there is one that is store bought. All the rest are basically hand laid. Uh, one of the things I liked about the Railcraft track, which Railcraft was eventually purchased by Macro Engineering, though it's, it's the same rail, was that uh, there are, besides being very low rail, the ties are prototypically sized. There are eight spikes per tie 
on each rail and they are very low so back in the old days when N-Scale featured the pizza cutter wheels they would run over the track without any problems so it was a way of converting all the wheels now are low profile most of them are, are metal and uh, all of the uh, couplers are, are Katy and body mounted except on the passenger cars where I've left them as Telgo mounted so, uh, I think that's pretty much an overview of it. We'll take a look at the railroad now. We'll walk around the railroad from uh, one end to the other. As I said, it's a point-to-point -point railroad designed for operation. Not all of it is done yet. Uh, this area right here is uh, where we're going to have a large chemical facility. However, there are still many pieces that are going to be built. Uh, they're in the shop and I've been working on them for a while, but when I get them done, then everything will be positioned and the buildings and all the other uh, uh, pieces will uh, be positioned so that they all work and seem to make sense. <clears throat> Underneath this area, there are uh, eight storage tracks that are actually in a loop. Uh, you go in one area and out the other area. The panels on top can be lifted out so that we can access those and when this area is completed there will be no track on top of these panels there will be buildings and other things but no track where any switching would be done uh, as we wouldn't be able to lift them out and if you can't lift them out you are certainly going to have problems underneath so it's just one of the ways to cover up this area and keep doing some modeling in here and you know this there's still so much that has to be done here. The abutments aren't done. You've got to actually shorten the road and do things like that. The uh, east buildings uh, and going underneath. When you go underneath this bridge here, it goes into the uh, the staging tracks there, which are known as east or excuse me as Huntley, which is the east end of the railroad. Uh, they come out of that tunnel over there when we're going to run a train and they'll go up the grade past this set of uh, uh, storage tracks which are going to be used for the chemical facility and past the industrial area back there where there's a uh, decent amount of switching. As we move further uh, west we're going to hit East Billings. This is the, the major town on the railroad but there's so much work to be done here. There's still more buildings that are going to go in uh, there's just cardboard there for the roads right now to simulate uh, the proper spacing and eventually that will all be done uh, with uh, uh, styrene and it will all be uh, weathered and painted up properly and there's several more buildings that are going to go in there and in back in the industrial area in the, in the back side uh, there are still uh, tracks that have to be put in there and there's about uh, eight more switches that I have to build to, to make that work. As we come along over here there's going to be a uh, uh, a junkyard, a scrap area. Uh, so none of this has been scenic yet. And none of the buildings are necessarily in their final location. That'll be done as the switches are put in. So. All right, as we come out of uh, East Billings, we're getting into Billings and the station there is uh, patterned after the Northern Pacific Station that was in Billings, Montana, although it's kind of reversed a little bit. The cafeteria, which is on the right in this uh, uh, model, was actually on the left, and the real one and uh, the freight house was on the other side. And I flipped them around so that it would actually work for this track plan. Uh, then we've got a little coach yard over at the side, and uh, some uh, industrial buildings in back that we have to add the switches to uh, to get switching in there. Now coming out or coming through Billings, there's uh, it's really a four-track main line at this point. Uh, it narrows down the, to a two-track main line as we get into this uh, to this first yard over here, and this is the uh, the uh, what you could call the the terminal yard. Uh, the work that's done here will be 
for cars that are going to be switched to the industries in buildings and uh, east buildings. Just past that is the main yard, which right now has an awful lot of cars on it and will probably be reduced. Um, and you can see the uh, North Coast Limited uh, train sitting there. Everything in this area is pretty well done. The one problem that we have is that uh, there are so many switches in the area and all of my switches are controlled with uh, uh, their switch machine motors underneath. But trying to figure out if you look, if you go back and photograph the, uh, or take a look at the panel here, uh, trying to figure out which switch to throw, looking at those switches to get up here is a bit of a task. So what I've done is, if you look up at the top, there are little pins every so often, they're colored pins. On the panel down here, some of the switches have a colored sleeve on it to match the pin, so it's a little bit easier to figure out what you're going to switch. Uh, the hardest part of building this uh, this whole end of the uh, yard and the uh, terminal yard is there are three uh, double slip switch machines in there that I scratch built. I built those after having done you know, several hundred regular machines or switches and uh, figured, well, it won't be hard. The instructions say the first couple that you build, you'll probably throw away. And I said, nah, I built enough of these that I'm not going to worry about that. So I built the first one, threw it away. Built the second one, threw it away. It was pretty close. The third one finally worked. <laughs> so I ended up with three of them that are stationed up here. And, trains actually go through them. <laughs> Into the yard down here still needs to be ballasted. And we've just done a little bit of work and hopefully we'll get to this uh, sometime in the, the near future. Uh, and as we come along to the end of the yard, there's the main engine facility over here. Uh, the main uh, Billings engine terminal. Uh, as you can see, there are a lot of engines here. Over the years I've collected a lot of engines almost all of them have uh, a decoder in them and many of them have sound in them. And the initial ones uh, there were times when I just had to mill away some of the uh, some of the frame to put the decoder in and uh, somewhere I had to mill away some areas to put in the uh, the speaker. It was a lot easier with the steam engines. Many of the engines are actually in the roundhouse uh, not all of them but a few of them do not have decoders in them and I'm not sure I'll ever get to them. I have the decoders but it's just a question of priorities and what I want to work on at the appropriate time. Coming through the main line on Billings we're down to a uh, two-track main line and it's fairly narrow here it's only a couple inches wide but one of the main objectives of this railroad is to keep the aisleways wide. I don't think there are any aisleways that are less than three feet wide. Many of them are quite a bit wider than that. The idea was to make it a comfortable area to work in. Now, this come across the Yellowstone River here uh, and into an area that is yet to be done. This, um, there are some canoeists in the river. They've been in the same place for a long time. I think they're lazy. <laughs> there are also a bunch of people sunbathing there on the bank. Uh, but this whole area is going over here is going to be a smelter. And it's going to be patterned after the smelter in, uh, in uh, Hancock, Michigan, which I have all the plans for. So everything that's sitting here right now is temporary. But just past that is the town of Mossman, Montana which is pretty well done. And in Mossman there's a line that branches off so there's a branch line going further west it goes upgrade and it goes right past Laurel Montana down there which is where we have some uh, Milwaukee equipment which interchanges with the uh, Danforth Hadley and Northern. Now again it's dull track main line uh, on the backside up against the uh, the background 
uh, is a single track that's going up grade, and that's the uh, the branch line. The main line uh, in front is uh, is all ballasted with uh, the appropriate color ballast. Uh, the branch line is a much darker ballast. There was a lot of ore coming down on that, and a lot of dirt. It was done a lot less inexpensively. When we come around the curve of the peninsula here, we get into the uh, the town of uh, Columbus, which is the largest town on the railroad. And switching in here can be a little complex. It was designed that way when I first started doing this, and I'm not sure I'd do it that way again, but it works, and we've, we've not had a problem with it. Um, there is one major problem that I discovered uh, a while ago. Uh, the station here, uh, if you look at it, it's, a, it's actually a replica of an actual uh, uh, Northern Pacific station. There's no parking lot. There's no way for the people to get there. And I didn't realize that until after all the buildings were in, so one of these days I got to take out some of the scenery behind it and put in a parking lot so people can actually get to the station. No. Uh, as you pass through Columbus, uh, the track goes from double, uh, the main line goes from uh, double track down to single track. And that was done on purpose. As I said, this railroad was designed for operation and we wanted to have it a little bit more complex. Have the dispatcher have some work to do. So when you get down to here, there's a lot more concerns about which train is uh, uh, has the appropriate clearance to the next town and also how long are the sidings and how long is the train running it. Up above is the, uh, the branch line again and it goes into the mountain back over there and <clears throat> actually in the mountain there's nothing but a loop so a train will go in there at one session and it'll come out the next session. The mines uh, back there are not completed, but they'll get done one of these days. There's no way of connecting them yet. I've got the stuff on the workbench to do that. Just another item that I haven't quite gotten to yet. That huge mountain is done primarily with geodesic scenery material and is hollow inside. And when we get around to the other side of the railroad, you'll see why. Uh, and we come through. Uh, uh, mission here. The only uh, industry here is a uh, sawmill. Behind the sawmill is a, uh, a shea which serves the logging area up here and it's done on a switchback. There is no connection of the track between the main line and the uh, logging railroad. Uh, at one time there would have been a switch put in but it would have been taken out so that it didn't have to be maintained. So when all the logging, when all the trees are finally gone and they decide they want to move the shea out, they'll put in a switch again, move it out, and abandon the area, take the switch out, and leave it straight track again. There's still quite a bit of work to do. The logging camp itself is pretty well done and there are a lot of stumps there, but all the equipment to actually move the logs still has to be uh, 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 built and installed and I have a lot of that it's just one of those things that uh, it'll get to a little bit later Again, the main line comes around this peninsula and comes into the town of Livingston and again it's just Livingston on the northern Pacific is a pretty big area it's a, there's a major yard there and here all I've got is a very small yard uh, we've decided we're going to actually expand this yard and take a couple inches out of this uh, aisleway, which is over four feet wide here, and put in uh, three or four more uh, yard tracks. And we'll get to that eventually. Uh, and we're going to do that because there's enough traffic on this railroad that it would really help us if we could uh, have uh, another little yard here. It'd certainly help a lot of the flow of traffic. We go into the tunnel of into this big mountain that you saw uh, from the other side over there and it works around this little curve here and by the way the the, uh, the minimum radius on the main line here is uh, 24 inches and a lot of the curves are a lot broader than that um, 
the uh, main line splits and part of it comes out down to uh, Assany, which is nothing more than a, uh, a large mine. There's the Norton Fuel Supply number one mine there, coal mine. The actual uh, main line itself is where the Challenger is sitting and it was sitting there because it got moved for a previous photo shoot. But it goes into a tunnel that tunnel goes around the mountain, comes out underneath the bridge over there, comes around, goes into this tunnel back into the mountain, curves around, comes out, goes across the bridge into another tunnel, and then eventually comes out over uh, <coughs> behind the mine on this side of the mine across the, uh, the trestle there. <coughs> The purpose of that is, I didn't want to do a helix. Uh, I had built one before and it was really a pain. But I needed to gain some altitude to get over some file cabinets that are stored on the other side. You'll see those in a minute. And this was one way of doing it. It was also a way where you could watch the train from one side and not have to walk around to the other half of the railroad to see it. Okay. Now. I can get to everything that's underneath in the mountains because, again, using geodesic scenery material, it's all very thin and it's all hollow in there. So I can climb up and get in there without any trouble if there's a derailment or something that needs attention. And, of course, one of the other main features is up above this large section of mountain here is uh, <clears throat> the water shutoff valve for the uh, ice maker for the refrigerator in the kitchen. And I knew that if I couldn't get to that, <laughs> there would be real trouble. So it was designed so that I could get to that shutoff. So across the trestle, we come into uh, actually the main line doesn't come into the town, it goes behind the town upgrade. There's a branch, another branch line that comes down on this side of the trestle into Logan, Montana. And there's a lot of switching in Logan. This can be a fairly complex and time-consuming uh, uh, switching area. Uh, the other end of the track at Logan goes in under the bridge that goes across the main line into a tunnel and actually goes into the other room, which uh, you'll see eventually and is the other end of the railroad. The main line comes across that bridge, across this little trestle here, and there's the, uh, uh, the Delight Apple Warehouse area there. And there are three tracks in there. And it's we have a mirror installed up there so that when someone's switching it, they can actually see what's going on on the other side of the first building. Right, there's an apple orchard over here and the house with a little barn and there's some beehives there and a couple guys tending them. And as you follow the trees all the way down, there's a road that goes back down into the orchard. And all of those trees uh, actually have apples on them. And unlike many of the models that you buy with the fruit on them, where the fruit seems to be on the top of the branches and on top of the leaves, when I made these, uh, I turned them upside down and sprinkled the, the fruit on the bottom. The fruit is, all the apples are actually actually edible. Uh, they're cake decorations, little pieces of sugar. So, and they were the right size and they worked out. I just found them in the grocery store one day. <laughs> so the main line goes through Whitehall and there are a couple areas. There are some hobos sitting here. Uh, there's a, an abandoned old Model T in the, in the ravine here. Uh, <clears throat> it goes past the uh, the Perry Stockyards goes across a couple of bridges which flows, they go across the uh, uh, this branch of the Yellowstone River over here and the second bridge actually goes across the track which again goes into the other room and we'll see that in a minute. So the main line is still up top. It goes through uh, Homestake, Montana which looks absolutely nothing like the real Homestake but, again, we we're only modeling the names and trying to get the, the road set up. <clears throat> the 
main line goes behind the town of uh, Butte, Montana into the tunnel over there and this is a scene that you see when you come down the stairs so why don't we go over there and follow it and look at that. <clears throat> that you see when you come down uh, the stairs into the basement and it was designed like this on purpose to give uh, you know some kind of an impression of a railroad actually being here and to pique someone's interest on the way down again there's a curve here it goes around what this little peninsula is and goes back on the other side and it comes out into Butte which again is a major switching area Montana and this part of the railroad is the only place where when you're looking at the uh, the trains and the the track you're actually looking south instead of north everywhere else on this railroad when you're looking you're looking north so west is to your left and east is to your right it reverses here but this is the only place now the main lane comes down goes under this bridge and goes into the other room where the other end of the railroad is and we can go in there and take a look at that. This is the workshop area in here and the other end of the railroad. The main line comes through the wall behind the door, comes through the town of Garrison, Montana, curves around in the back behind the uh, spray booth and everything is sitting there it ends up on this side of the room and this is uh, <clears throat> the other main yard the main storage area if you remember Logan was a branch line it also went through the wall if you turn around uh, Bill over in the uh, back corner over there is where it comes through the wall over there and there's actually a Y there so that I uh, can uh, come into Garrison, the town, the main station here, or can go directly into the yard. And one of the reasons for doing that is for open houses, this gives us the ability to run trains around without switching, just uh -huh. so that people can see trains that are running and we don't take the time to do switching where people who aren't real model railroads might lose interest. They like to see the trains moving and this is one way of doing it. Well, thanks for the opportunity to show you the railroad here. Uh, you're now sitting in the, uh, in the workshop and all the stuff around you, you can see all the, uh, the debris that's uh, stuff to get done. But uh, uh, looking forward to seeing you uh, in the regional convention here in October. Uh, come and look at the railroad. It's going to be done uh, as an open house. There will be uh, plenty of trains that will be run and hopefully we'll have a lot of visitors. And next year, uh, for the uh, National Convention, it'll be open again for an open house and for operating sessions. There will be two operating sessions that you can sign up for if you enjoy operating. So, hopefully we'll see you then. Uh, it's a railroad that operates quite well, runs well, it's been well maintained. So, we're having no problems with it and it's fun to run. So, hopefully we'll see you.